Hello, this is uh, Dave and welcome to Agri Story. I'm here with uh, Mr. Wolf and uh, this is just a general show advice, not personal advice. And how are you doing, Wolfie? Did you did you have a good weekend? I've been busy, 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 busy as, as, as at the moment, Dave. Uh, I've got my mum here, so it's been uh, fairly, yeah, uh, it's, it's just one of those times that uh, she's moved over here and, you know, reading through in the middle of the night, I can't sleep, I read through American um, news, all this sort of thing. So it's, it's been, my mind has been racing pretty much every day. Okay, that's what can happen when your mum comes and moves in with you. Yeah, um, pretty much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, general shared advice, not personal advice, and we're going to get going on, on, on this. Uh, Wolfie, yes. Wolfie, Wolfie. Now, we've got two dividend stocks, a Suncorp, which we've had as a dividend, or we got as a dividend, and Metcash. Both having announcements today, which make the Wolfie say, well, if I'm in it for a div, I'm not selling. Correct. If I'm in it for a div, I'm not selling. Um, uh, that's for Suncorp and Metcash, right? For both of them come up with updates. These are two of our staple dividend stocks, um, which actually brings me to another point, Dave. We are just about to launch the dividend portfolio on our website. So I'm going to be adding that on this week. Uh, so watch for that. Those two are probably going to be on there. Uh, but anyway, you've got. Let's start with let's start with Suncorp. So all, all day today, they've just started to talk, talk. There was rumors on AFR. And that's what I was reading in the middle of the night, right? Last night, saying that uh, again, Suncorp's looking to divest its banking business, um, do merger or maybe trades or something like on those lines. There's been talk about this for some time, right? We've always talked about that. It, uh, it's going to be one or the other. Obviously, the banking is the weaker part of the of the business, and we always treated Suncorp as an insurer more than a banker. So if they can demerge, sell, it will I think will release some value to the shareholders. So generally speaking, over the last two or three years, the market viewed the mergers very positively. So if you're in this, great, possibly good news, because uh, if there's a good demerger, you're going to get some shares in a banking unit. Uh, if there's a trade sell, good news as well. So you know there's going to probably be some sort of capital. Uh, returns. Okay, let's see what happens. Like I said, if you're not in it, possibly a good opportunity to get in uh, on the back of that. And you know, you can cop keep this for the next 12 months and see it goes. I mean, like I said, it hasn't done anything for the last five years. Um, so it's not as if you're going to get much out of it at this stage. It's more of a dividend, nothing else. And, and a solid, but a solid performer in a, in a very difficult market, Wolf. You it is, say. you know, defensive nature. Um, and hopefully, it will, in a bad market, it will outperform everything else. Uh, Wolf, uh, Metcash, I suppose, another similar stock uh, outperforming in a, in a tough market. It Had is. a little bit of a sell down lately, but again, um, uh, everyone a little bit panicking over nothing. Very strong announcement. Yeah, well, we look, it hasn't, they haven't actually updated anything bad as yet over the last six to 12 months. It's just a market. It's just a market. If they've gone maybe a little bit too far, you know, there's nervous Nellies out there. They've decided to take some profits out of this because they had a pretty good run uh, and they sold that. Again, it's not a stock that's going to shoot the lights out by any means. I mean, if you go back over five, 10 years, it's not as if it's you've made bucket buckets, lots of money, but it's a dividend stocks. So we're going to keep it as a dividend stock. Maybe a little bit of, you know, we're going to get some uh, share price performance out of it as well. But generally speaking, it's a, uh, it's a divvy. Um. Wolf uh, Beach Petroleum, which we actually were trending. Uh, interesting that UBS had come out with uh, another decent uh, target price around that 195. So possibly a little trade in that. Uh, I think it's in the right sector still. And we had another pretty decent upgrade uh, with uh, STO. Uh, I think a target price around $9 by UBS. So two stories there and two stocks there in the energy section with upgrades, which I want to bring everyone's attention to. Uh, Wolf, getting back to announcements, evolution. Mm -hmm. Ooh, sign of the times, isn't it? It is, and maybe uh, a reminder for everyone uh, that there is cost pressures. There's going to be maybe not so great performances over the next month or so. We Remember, next month in July, we've got uh, quarterlies coming through. Uh, so this is confession season, last, last few days before they release all the numbers. And it wasn't great by evolution. So production downgrade. You know, talking about cost cost pressures, uh, time. Uh, one of the Red Lake, I think, uh, mines has been delayed for twelve months. So that's you know that's a putting pressure on production and so on. It hasn't been a great time for evolution, no doubts. And unfortunately, also gold. 
it, while it's been high, it just hasn't been performing either. So if there is really for the, for the shareholders, David, there's nothing really to say, well, I'm going to stick, stick in this for the moment. Maybe they'll just get out and come back somewhere else. Um, and FWD. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look, I am. I want to actually read this out. I will just read this one out because it's it's actually a very interesting, um, not a cross section, but just just to give you an update of what might be happening around Australia, right? With uh, with stories like 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 this. So it's like a snapshot of the current condition. So I, I'm I'm I was fascinated reading through this, thinking, my God, this is this could pretty much apply to a lot of companies out there. So I've, let me just quickly read it out to you, right? So. Um, Today provides an update in relation to the FY22 result, including an ongoing underperformance of a key project. So, you know, when you're a contractor, one project can destroy your uh, bottom line. The significant impact of cost increases, right? Probably much across the line. Material and labor shortages. Hello, right? So it's, it's like a yeah snapshot of what is happening in Australia at the moment. Um, so a combination of project delays associated with poor weather, another thing, right, they've mentioned, poor weather. I mean, they've used every excuse under the, under the sun um, to basically justify the poor performance. On the East Coast, as well as labor and material shortages have resulted in lower than expected progress across projects in New South Wales, Victoria, Western Australia. So basically just everything. They've mentioned everything for all the projects around. We haven't had a great time. This is the, these are the possibilities, you know, personal changes as well. There's a lot of things happening in Fleetwood. So it's, you can see that's why it's going backwards. But what you can extrapolate out of this in thinking, well, if there's any other companies in a similar space, uh, the building materials, maybe you'd be possibly thinking, let's get out and come back to it later. And look down 18%. So mm. it doesn't look too good at all, Wolf, does it? No, no. I, it's, it's, I think it's just a synonymous of what's, what's happening right now behind the scenes. So Wolf, if you look what's happening behind the scenes and you've got a member's equity story that still might have shares in certain se sections or, yep. so what are you saying? If you've got, uh, if you invested in companies that obviously going to be affected by inflation with a lot of production, buying a lot of um, sort of parts and importing, exporting, are those companies that you may be getting out of before you see a report? I'm just going to just go to this one in particular, right? So let's just focus on FWD and they're in a building and construction, um, contracting. So that's the three areas that I'd be probably looking and thinking, okay, if I've got any companies in that specific spaces, I'd definitely be nervous uh, and sitting up. So like things like Brickworks, right? Yeah. Um, Borrows of the world, uh, CSRs of the world, things like that, I'd be going, well, you know, there could be a little bit of cost pressures out there. Contractors as well, specifically, you know, maybe some of these, um, just doing thinking maybe in construction contract contractors, stuff like this that you'd be probably being really nervous about. Uh, so yeah, you know, just look at, look at your own portfolio, see what you got in there uh, and just heed the warning from F FWD. All right. Well, getting on to uh, happier story, RUL. Um, you know, it's broken a trend. It's not tra It's not good enough for me. I need to see it do a little bit more. But another little upgrade now. No, you know, they're talking a nice update. I think they've gone from oh, a month ago or so from about 47 to 50 million ARR, right, which is their annual recurring revenues. So that's nice. Um, it's now moving in the right direction. It's a tech stock that's still delivering okay. So, and Wolf, and importantly, that's come in the last like two, three weeks. So, you know, they're getting momentum. It's it's on the cards. It's happening right now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you know, you just want to see what you probably want to see now in that quarterly. So next month, you know, like I said, for me, I would not be rushing into these stories. I'd want to just see the some of the cash flows to see how much money they're losing or how much of the money they're actually not losing, right? Before I make the commitment to buy some of these on the rebound, unless you know, unless you've already been updated in some of these companies and you go, okay, I might buy a couple um, with this rebound in the US, which we need to just quickly talk about. So yeah, look, I, I don't mind this. This is in a good space. This is in the mining space, which is still fairly good um, servicing that, that part, the, uh, the mining space. So um, you know, I'm on the positive side and the negative side on RUL. Wolf, car sales. Mm -hmm. Now, 
I mean, it's been trending down really since January. But this announcement is a it's a huge announcement. It's a huge acquisition for them. Yeah, um, they, they're cleaning up. So they bought they bought forty nine percent, I think last year or the year before, uh, and they're cleaning up the fifty out. So they've they've exercised its option to purchase the other fifty one percent of this trading um, trading group out of the out of the US. And funnily enough, Dave, when you read through it, and you know, sometimes you think to yourself, yeah, just just buying similar business to what they've already got. In fact, they bought buying out of non-core stuff, right? So this is non-auto, which is RVs uh, and power sports. Uh, but at least they're buying something that's pretty dominant in the US. So while non-core, maybe they're buying a pretty good business that's still growing and maybe taking some shares out of the other ones, uh, like trucks and so on. So for me, good. I'm happy with that. Um, let's hope it works for them. So if I was a shareholder, I'd be going, yeah, hey, okay. Not bad. At least you're buying something that that's got a dominant market position. Yeah, no, that's good. But you wouldn't be worried about them sort of buying it right at this time, just just where we we could be going to. Uh, I mean, world recession. I mean, could you argue that they could be if they waited a year, they could be buying this a lot cheaper, Wolfie? Well, Dave, I mean that it's a good good question. The question is. At least they're not buying it 12 months ago when it's things were on top of the market, right? No, but I mean, it's, it's, uh, the market hasn't, you know, it's only slightly down really from the highs. And if the market goes down a lot more, uh, this could look a very expensive acquisition for them. Yeah, but, you know, look, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good point you brought up, but it, it's hard to say how far this trading value will go down if it goes down at all over the next 12 months, right? Uh, possibly could. Possibly might not, might not, right? So look, at least I'm happy that they're buying when markets right being routed over the last month. Um, so maybe they got some value out of it. Whether the bottom, the bottom, probably not. But, you know, it's always difficult to time the bottom. But you know, I'm I'm just glad they haven't bought this like six to twelve months ago when things were just <laughs> completely. The, you know, the valuations were ridiculous. Oh, they only bought they only bought half of it anyway. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Say no more. Mm -hmm. Um. OZL, again, similar issues that we're seeing across the yeah, board. Yeah, you know, so you've got, uh, we looked at EVN, it was fairly broad and EVN specific with one of the mines that was delayed. Here again, same similar thing, right? We've got um, general cost pressures and Carapatina, which is one of the biggest mines for them, specific that they've got issues there as well. Uh, Wolf Link. Mm -hmm. um, a lesson to be learned. Yeah, look, I, I think it's a good lesson in another another different lesson than we normally have seen the lessons about MA M &A, uh, type plays where you know either they they there's a bidding war or they pull out. This one's a different, this was reducing its uh its bid from 550 to 450, right? So the market conditions have changed. You know, there was a I think A Triple C came out saying, so I'm not so sure about this acquisition as well. So they had to. Um, probably talk to ACCC and see if they can maybe somehow alleviate all the issues that they, they might cause with this acquisition. So interesting, isn't it? That um, the market obviously didn't buy this 550 bid. They brought it down to 350. Now it's 450. Will the market like this or do they think it's going to go even lower? I don't know. Well, it's interesting because the markets yeah. never really believe the 550 bid. And That's right. they're certainly by the look of it, not believing the 450 <laughs> bid or that's going to happen either, which is... Uh, which is actually really surprising price action, Wolf. But... I think there's two things going on there. Dave. I think, first of all, they've got Pixar. With Pixar maybe slowing down with um, the housing market, slowing down, right? So that could be weighing significantly on it because they've still got a very, very strong position in Pixar, and that's the crown jewel for them. Um, on the, plus, obviously, on the other hand, maybe the market's still thinking that maybe ACCC just won't, won't allow it. Wolf, Wynn came through with some very, very good nickel results. Mm -hmm. Um, bounce up absolutely beautifully. Now, when you see results like that, um, are you a buyer or are you in this market? Are you sitting on the sidelines? Um, not a good question to ask for me if I'm a buyer because I'm, you know, I don't tend to buy these sort of things personally. Hmm. But if I was talking about someone, you know, what would you do here? I'd be going, look, very, very good results. You've got nice thicknesses. So anything over 10 meters for me in nickel is pretty good. Uh, and then everything, anything over 3% is pretty good. So you've got both of these things, right? 
Then you look at the, the, the depth and it's less than 300 meters. So there is something in there. You go, well, there's something definitely there. They need to drill more for sure. Because if you look at the actual one of the, uh, the presentation that they've come up with, I think one of the slides on there, they, you know, they've obviously hit the mineralization in there, but they need to drill more holes to confirm what's going on there. Uh, because they've just hit a very small part, part of it. You know, you know when you, if you drill something, you, you can just put dots in there, then you have to draw around the dots to come up with some sort of a picture. It's not easy unless you've got lots of dots, Dave. Yeah, a little bit how I do my charting. That's what you That's do. That's exactly right, yeah. Oh. If I've got three dots, I can just come up with a cat. Uh, <laughs> um, all right, so... Look, I, look, I think... In this market, I think you've got, it's 92 million market cap. Mm -hmm. I think it needs to do a little bit more, doesn't it? Yeah, I need more probably results. Yes, I, I love the results that I've seen today, right? They, they're really very interesting. Um, tick a lot of boxes, but we need to see more for sure, for sure. Uh, and hopefully we'll see them in the next few weeks. And again, CAE up 25%. Mm -hmm. With, I mean, it's, it's interesting. The charts are saying don't buy me yet because mm -hmm. they're, they're drilling 40 meters away from where they drilled before. Mm -hmm. The results were, you know, were expected to be good and it's up 25%, but I don't think it's so much that i think you know it's just brought our ten the market's attention back to a story that's most probably been a little bit oversold over mm -hmm. last uh because the actual core drill results are fairly good aren't they yeah they are i mean they drilled down the guts right? even they said it, they drilled down the guts right of the um brescia mineralization so that you expect them to come up with some decent results you know but then again 200 meters one percent copper Pretty good i mean you can't say no yeah. um but yeah, like, like you said i mean they need to drill, drill more they've they also drill to about a thousand meters so they've got still some essays pending on that the deeper type stuff see what comes up that could be nothing you know it could be pretty poor so that could be the catalyst wolf because at the moment it looks like a, a nice big blob doesn't it of, of, yeah, yeah of, it does. a fairly uh, rich rich vein and uh, it looks like it goes down to about 500 meters so far this mineralization yeah. so we need to see more out of it uh, see if it may be a little bit further expanding sideways. Um, but, you know, we've seen a lot of interesting drilling out of CIE over the last six to 12 months. But we just need to see more, unfortunately. And, you know, so, I, I love how you bring up the little point right at, the, right at the beginning, right? When you said they would need to bring some attention to themselves again. It's, it's nice to have a nice brescia somewhere where if, you, if the market sort of forgets about you, you, just go back to that same hole, keep drilling the same thing to bring out the attention again, isn't it? <laughs> Well, go, to the, go to the one honey well. Well, I mean, how how much have we seen that the last year? But people drilling in exactly, exactly. Where exa well, they know exactly what's there, and the share yeah. price goes through the roof. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, it gets the share price up, and then they can do a little bit of a raise. Yeah. Um, oh, there you go. There you go. Oh, God, Dave, I, I, you're not skeptical, are you? No, not at all. Uh, but the good news is, is that, is uh, that, do they have much cash or? Ah, look, this is always the the, the topic, isn't it? Do they have cash? <laughs> Good question. Yeah. Well, let's have a look. Let's have a look what they what they what they see. I think you learn the more you look at resource companies, uh, the cash aspect is so important, especially if especially you're gonna... in a market like this, right? Yeah. Where it's difficult to get a, a good capital raising uh, uh, away. I mean, in a in a hot hot market where we had maybe twelve to twenty months ago, you actually were cheering a capital raising because it means that you're going to get more money and your private prices are going to go up. So <laughs> I see. Completely opposite. Completely opposite at the moment. So let's have a quick look what cash they've got. Um, and that will give us pretty much an idea if they need some more money to drill. And you, when you drill, drill a kilometer well, well, I think they do. I think if I'm right, Wolf, I'm, mm -hmm. they've only got about one million in cash. Uh, well, let's have a look from. Oh, God, they come up with a. Okay, so they've got. Yeah, one point three, isn't it? So I'd say. Uh, placement. Okay, hang on. there was a placement on the second of March. All right, let me see how much they raised there because that will remember that was from the April. So they would have talk, talked about where I talked about March. Maybe they have how much they raised basically one million. Okay, so they, yeah, they, they need to do they need to come up with more money. Simple as that. Yeah, so you definitely wouldn't be buying that one. No, you'd be, you'd, be, you'd be thinking, look, there might be a capital raising coming. So I would probably wouldn't be touching that. Let's have a look at the win, see what's going on there. You know, the other one that we talked about. Oh, yeah, see so if they've got money. 
uh, and nickel. So let's have a look if they drilled anything. Um, okay, so we'll go to April again to see the last quarterly, how much cash they've got there. And they've got 20 mil. That's pretty good. That's going to last them a bit. Much better. Yeah, Much better. definitely. So it gets a, an extra little tick win if you're going to yeah, have a look at it. Sure. You, you know, you, you're, you're, you're going to be punting without the risk of a capital raising. All right. Well, for some, there's some takes away from today. And certainly uh, Sun and MTS, if they're dividend stocks, they're, they're different plays. They're looking very, very good. Two companies, Win and CAE, came out with some good drill results. Win, the preferred one, definitely uh, it's got a little bit of cash, but neither we wouldn't be buying either of them yet uh, because um, I think they both need to do a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And the general theme is, you know, watch out. The inflation is really starting to hit. Inflation costs uh, and the, 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 the cost of possibly even labor going up are really starting to affect a, a lot of companies at the moment. Uh, which could be seriously affected. So you've got to really watch out for this inflation and uh, what it's doing behind the scenes or for a lot of these companies. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, look, I think there might be some similar patterns come through in April, sorry, April, in uh, July. Uh, companies come up with a similar type commentary, right? What FWA, FWD did, D did. So just watch your portfolio. Just have a look if there's anything like it's you no know, similar type space. Um, and, you know, deal it with it accordingly. Now, I just want to quickly just talk about before we go, Dave, just on the US on Friday, what happened and the reason why we had a bit of a reversal in the US and a bit of a jump. Um, and the talk is that the needle has moved again, right? So we had, everyone was scared about uh, recession, market was crashing, we had inflation as well. So the needle has moved slightly to the positive side of a rebound where the market's not as bearish as it was because they can see that a possible um, weakening of the economy without going to recession, it's going to be very good for taming inflation, right? Which possibly could mean that, and this is the commentary out of the US, basically meaning that the Fed might not move as much on the interest rate. So I think they're talking about peak of about three, three and a half percent uh, interest rates, which is pretty good, right? <laughs> you think about it. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. I mean, that's what the market at the moment is concentrating on. It could change by the end of the week for all we know, right? There's numbers coming out through um, regularly. So we'll see. But right now, the market's focusing on that thinking, okay, maybe it's not as bad. Maybe we've got too far with this big sell-off. Maybe there's need, we need a little bit of a bounce. Yeah, and, and definitely that bounce is, is happening, Wolf. And uh, possibly the way it's looking, we could bounce again this week, which would be good, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but uh, the general theme is, is that, is that until we see even much stronger price action, the general the general movement is still down, my friend. Yeah, look, I think we need to see some concrete evidence, right? I know this. This is I think the market is speculating at the moment uh, and hanging on some words coming out of uh, the Fed uh, and some of the, some of the pretty strong market commentators out of the US. But you know things could change, like I said, rapidly again, uh, and we've seen that already a few times in the last couple of months. Yeah, and, and you're going to get these little bounces. And I'll tell you what, there was a lot of positive noise back in 2008 when, it, again, it bounced back up to trend line, right? Yeah, so, it could, be, could yeah. follow a similar pattern. You know, maybe back in those days, someone was going, oh, guys, it's not as bad. Uh, we're looking like it's good again. And then, you know, a month later, no, it isn't. <laughs> it's yeah, no. <laughs> well, one thing we can be sure, the market will surprise us one way or the other. <laughs> well, they might be surprising us because they're not, not as bearish as they were like two days ago. <laughs> Uh, on that note, Wolfie, listen, thank you very much and uh, look forward to uh, doing this tomorrow. We've got live tomorrow night at uh, seven o'clock, which is always a lot of fun. Thanks, Thanks Wolfie. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.